Hello everybody, welcome back to the Rock's Roost. And the first exciting episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy II, the Pixel Remaster. Now, I just finished the first game. In fact, just a few minutes ago I recorded my thoughts on it. And I think it's time to just to move on to the second game. Now this game is sort of infamous, I guess, in the series. It is, uh, some people call it a black sheep. I don't know if I'd call it that. It is different. Um, you have to remember, there wasn't really an established uh, tradition at this point. This is the second game. So uh, one of the things Final Fantasy is about is that experimentation. I think every game has tried something new. Sometimes it's something big. Sometimes it's something small. Um, in this game, the most, uh, I guess, well-known new feature is the character growth system. Um, kind of like in Elder Scrolls, you get stronger at something by practicing it. It's also like uh, real life. So they were trying to, to create a system that worked just like real life. And I think they succeeded. Um, this version polishes the original quite a bit and makes it a little bit, a little bit more accessible. Um, and I think basically the best way to just to do this is to just sit back, relax, don't worry about character growth, and just let it happen. Okay? What you do need to do is you need to decide which character is going to tank, which character is going to be... Um, black mage type and what character is going to be a healer you do need to make those decisions and stick with them and i think once you do that if you just play um you'll be fine i i, I think a lot of the hate that this game gets especially for the systems for the growth system is uh i think people get too too sort of wrapped up in, oh, I've got to gain the levels, got to have the levels, got to have the levels, because they need that number there to know if they're okay to progress. Um, RPGs, especially older games like this, are most, are, are, are combat and they're exploration. And if you get to a point where the enemies sort of push it in for you, you need to do some more um, exploration to get stronger and more combat to get stronger so i think the best way to approach this game is just kind of kick back and let it happen and it's a good game to do that in because this game has a really good story quite honestly um a madman who who wants to not only take over the world but i mean destroy everything and he is um well on his way to becoming a mortal um, so this is, uh, the stakes have never been higher. The game is very atmospheric. Um, at least previous versions of it have been. We'll see if this one maintains that. Um, and it is actually a pretty dark game, thematically. Um, the pixel remasters are very colorful, and I'll be interested to see if that affects my opinion of the atmosphere of this game, but... With all that said, let's just jump in, shall we? If you've never experienced Final Fantasy II before, I'm honored that you would be experiencing with me it with me for the first time. So let's go. Let's press any key. I am playing on the PC. Um, there, I've not modded anything except for the font. I replaced the font with the Final Fantasy VI font, which I think looks a bit better. Other than that, it's completely vanilla. Uh, I'm using a controller. Uh, let's see, new game. So, uh, let's see, the extras. We do have a bestiary, we have a music player, an art gallery. Because it's the PC version, we have to get back to this menu to see those things. Uh, we have options, let's see. This, this looks fine. I, I think we're fine. Yeah, okay, this is fine. All right, go back. Uh, let's start a new game. Okay. Unlike the first game, we have actual named characters uh, who have 
kind of back kind of a backstory. All three of them have basically all four of them rather have a kind of the same backstory in a way. Um, but this is a step forward for the for the series. The first game, uh, the characters were blank slates and they were representative of you or aspects of you. Uh, this time there is uh, a little bit more characterization. Whether or not that's a good thing, that's an independent individual opinion. We're going to stay with the canon names. Therian, Maria, Guy, or Guy, and Leon. Yes. A long-lived peace. Is at an end. Oh my goodness. This dude means business. Now what would you think if that actually happened? The Emperor of Palamecia has called forth monsters and has begun his campaign for world conquest. That is mega fast. A rebel army arose in the kingdom of Finn to thwart the Emperor's plans. Here is Hilda, the princess, but the rebel's castle fell. Uh, sorry, you'll have to pause to read that. Left with little choice, the rebels withdrew to the remote town of Altair. So there's Finn. Four youths from Finn also found themselves fleeing the Empire. They had lost their parents at the hands of the Empire, but their escape wasn't over. I guess they want us to be breathless trying to read that, just like our four figures of fate here uh, would be breathless re running from these black knights into the woods. I mean, imagine this. You're fleeing your hometown... From these horrific forces that that spawn from you know not where. You have the Emperor of Palamecia, but his power is welling up from some unknown source. And you have these horrific knights that are just charging out everywhere. And the, the fireballs, which we would call bombs, laying waste to everything. And you're forced to flee in the middle of the night, running into the woods... Where finally, you're cornered. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. So you fight. And fall. Will he live? He will. I sense a strong life force within him. He should regain consciousness soon. We found them like this on the escape from Finn, fallen from terrible wounds. By the time we brought them here, I feared it was already too late. His life is not in danger. This sigil will strengthen his life force. We should let him rest now. Of course. We'd best be off to the meeting. I imagine they're already waiting for us. If the Empire is allowed to complete their dreadnought, they're building in Basque. Bathsk. <laughs> their attack will begin in earnest. We cannot sit idly by and watch. We must act. Things are not looking good. Not looking good at all. Here we are. Where am I? Leon. Maria. Guy. Where are you? Leon, you're alive. I thought... I thought you... I'm fine, Maria. 
You seem all right too, guy, but wait, where's Leon? Princess of Finn, save us. But Leon not here. I see. Don't worry, I'm sure he's okay. He's okay. Furion's uh, sprite looks very much like the box art. It's the first time it's looked like that. Really, uh, it's looks similar to that in the PSP and GBA versions, but uh, uh, this, this is the most convincing we've seen this so far, I think. So you've regained your strength. Very good. Your life force is strong indeed. It was you who saved us, wasn't it? Thank you. Forgive me. Oh, forgive me, your highness. There is something I must ask of you. Please let us to join the rebel army. Allow us to join, I think you mean. I could never allow such a thing. You know nothing of battle. You would only be throwing your lives away. You should return to your homes. But we have no homes. Not anymore. The Imperials attacked and our parents... Our parents... I'm truly sorry, but that changes nothing. I cannot permit you to join our army. If you've nowhere else to go, you're welcome to stay here in Altair. If you know our password, you should be able to live here well enough. Password is Wild Rose. Remember it well. And here we go. This is one of the... Uh, uh, novel uh, systems of the game is, is remembering passwords that open up dialogue trees. This was very innovative at the time. It's a shame we didn't get this uh, in North America back in the day. I would have really, really enjoyed this. Um, the Another thing I want to say is the, the now standard trope of orphaned heroes is... Uh, I'm not sure if this is the first game to have orphaned heroes, but it, it's got to be an early example of that. Okay, uh, learn. You go learn, you go Wild Rose. Anytime you see a term in red, and we are going to be getting all the achievements for this game, just like we did the first game. One of those achievements is learning all of these passwords, and some of them are missable. So There's a lot of missable stuff in general in this game. So, So once you've learned it, you can say it back by going to ask and choosing. The Wild Rose is the insignia of the Kingdom of Finn. It represents our hope for a flourishing future of strength and beauty. But what will become of Finn now? I've heard that the Empire's captives suffer there in confinement even as we speak. Maria, your brother Leon is missing, is he not? It's possible that he's being held in Finn as well. But Finn is far too dangerous to travel to now. The Empire's beasts still stalk the streets. Gaining entrance to the city will not be easy. The man at my right is Minwu, the white wizard who tended your wounds. Speak with him before you leave. He may be of some assistance. And then we just go exit. And we get the um, button control system. Let's talk to Minwu. I see your destiny clearly. The future it holds seems closely entwined with my own. You will begin by journeying to Finn. That is the first step toward realizing your fate. Let's ask him Wild Rose. <laughs> You've wasted no time using the password. Heed well the information it will bring you. You can learn much of value by listening. I offer you one more bit of advice before you depart for Finn. Those who have fallen in battle can be revived at a sanctuary. Should one of you fall before you reach Finn, go without hesitation to the nearest sanctuary. All right, thank you. And here, Red Mage, Evil Twin. The port of Paloom leaves not a to boot 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 Let's start over. The port of Palum. Palum? Palum, Palum? Palum lives not far, lies not far east of here. But a lake separates, so you won't be able to reach the town uh, without a canoe. Okay, green is not something we can learn, but it's something to take heed of. Heading to Finn, are we? Well, it's not my place to tell you what to do, but I, I'd reconsider it if I was you. 
It's a dangerous place to be. See, the city is crawling with the Empire's monsters. To the north lies a small village called Gatria. Judging by the look of you, you'll be lucky to make it that far. Before you go anywhere, I suggest you visit the room with the sigil that saved your life. There you'll be to your fine people who can teach you a thing or two about adventuring. I think you're going to need all the advice they can spare. Okay. So he has given us a uh, kind of, kind of in a way, a, a, a measurement metric for our progress. If we can make it to Gatria without getting it pushed in, we should be okay. This is the Rebel Army's war room. Indeed, indeed. If you notice on the on the back of their capes, uh, the little circle, that is supposed to be the Rose of Finn, the Wild Rose. Very cool. All right. Let's go check out this sigil. Ah, here we go. Nothing happens. I, th I think you would be healed again if you stepped in that, if you weren't already at full. Shall I teach you a thing or two about weapons? Oh, well, yes. There are seven weapon categories. Swords and spears, axe staves, uh, knives and bows and unarmed. Swords, spears, axes, staves and knives are all one-handed weapons and can be equipped along with a shield. It's also possible to equip two one-handed weapons, one in each hand. Equipping a bow requires two free hands, but it allows the character to attack with the same damaging force from the rear row of the party formation. Fighting unarmed is another splendid choice and can be powerful as any weapon. Unfortunately, equipping a shield cuts an armed combatant's attack power in half. So if you plan to fight unarmed, it's probably wise to just skip shields altogether. Would you care to hear about the information displayed on the status menu? You can develop the attributes and abilities displayed on the status menu while fighting battles. Attributes such as strength and magic will change according to the actions you take in battle. If a character attacks, his or her strength and weapon skill may improve. Similarly, if a character uses magic, his or her spirit, intellect, and magic level may improve. There are 11 different attributes that can change. More detail? Oh heck yes. HP. If a character loses HP during battle, his or her maximum HP will increase. Participating in lots of battles can also increase maximum HP. MP. If a character's MP drops during battle, his or her maximum MP will rise. Strength. Attacking during battle will increase the character's strength. Stamina. If a character loses HP during battle, his or her stamina will improve. Spirit. Using white magic in battle will increase the caster's spirit. Agility. Battling while your evasion is high will erase agility. So if you're already high agility, you get more agility. You can also equip a shield to raise this. Intellect. Using black magic in battle will increase the caster's intellect. Magic. If a character's MP drops during battle, his or her magic will rise. Accuracy. As strength rises, so will accuracy. Equipping better weapons will also improve accuracy. Evasion. It, being attacked by foes will raise evasion. Equipping a shield will also improve evasion. Magic defense. When foes cast spells on a character, his or her magic defense will rise. As you can see, it never hurts to try all manner of things in battle. That's actually probably the most important uh, thing you're going to learn in here. And I, I totally like, I totally just fluffed it off with a stupid voice. Sorry. 
<clears throat> would you like a little? Uh, would you say what? Would what in the world? I don't even know. What would you say to a little lesson on skill levels, eh? Skill levels can be divided into two broad categories: weapon skill levels and magic skill levels. But wait, there's more. Act now and get a second sham wow for free. Just pay separate shipping and handling. Weapon skill levels are divided by weapon types, such as swords and axes. Similarly, uh, magic skill levels are divided by spell. Spells like cure and fire each have their own skill level. Attacking with a given type of weapon improves the corresponding weapon skill. As your skill levels rise, your attack and accuracy with those types of weapons will likewise improve. Casting a given spell improves the corresponding magic skill. Spells become more powerful and effective as your skill levels rise. Not sure where that came from. Would you like to learn about armor? Why the heck not? There are four types of armor. Shields, helms, body armor, and gloves. Shields are equipped in the same fashion as one-handed weapons in either the right hand or the left. Since wearing a shield only requires one hand, you can also equip any one-handed weapon along with it. Should you choose, you can equip two shields, one in each hand. This makes you attack empty-handed, however. Helms are equipped on the head, gloves on the hands, and forearms, and body armor, of course, on the body. Provided you can afford it, you should always keep your party protected with good armor. Two shields also... Uh, can really help with the old evasion stat in terms of growth that is i don't suppose i could teach you a lesson on magic eh well there's two schools of magic you see there's, uh, there's black magic and then there's uh, uh, white magic see white magic is specialized in healing and support spells see for example a uh, 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 cure restores a hp and life revives characters who've been killed see uh, black magic is specializes on offensive spells, see? Uh, blizzard deals ice, it's under lightning, and you know, you get it. Uh, you, you can learn both black and white in any combo uh, you choose, uh, uh, but you can only learn 16 spells, okay? Don't forget that, but you can't forget the spell. Uh, you can, you, you know, you, you know, you see how it works. And the forbidden, uh, forgotten spells can be learned again, but their spells... Reset to level one. So use caution when forgetting spells. Nothing happens. You want to know more about the free command, am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can escape from battles by selecting the flea command. Uh, there is no point in fighting and losing battle. No, sir. No, sir. If a foe is too difficult, you better off just fleeing off like a chicken in the woods. Boy. Just run on. Think carefully before you act, okay? Uh, shall I tell you about chests? Uh, treasure chests can contain things like items and gear. Many treasure chests also hold rare items you'll not find for sale in any shop. But see, if you're lucky enough to come across them, you need to hold on to them, please, please. But treasure chests aren't all gill and glory by any means. Some chests conceal monsters lurking within. Oh, yes. There's no way to know what's inside a chest till you open it, but monsters often accompany especially good loot. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> Speaking of monsters, yes. There are many types, uh, different types of monsters. Some monsters are vulnerable to certain types of attacks. For example, the undead are weak against fire, and aquatic monsters are weak against lightning. However, there are also monsters that absorb particular elemental attacks. Casting fire on a monster made of flame will heal it instead of doing damage. You can damage zombies and other undead with restorative items like your and magic, like your rather, and items like garlic. But be careful when using spells that steal HP or MP, such as Drain and Osmos. When used against the undead, these spells can backfire and hurt you instead.
How about a lesson on key terms? In the course of a conversation with someone, a particularly important word may come up. When this happens, three commands will appear, ask, learn, and key items. Select learn to commit the key item to memory. You can then use ask to ask people about any key terms you learned. Keep in mind that only certain words can be learned this way. To show someone an item from your inventory, select key items. When you learn new words or find rare items, you should ask people about the words or show them what you found. Would you like me to explain the formation command to you? Use the formation command to assign characters to either the front or the rear row of the bad party's battle formation. Characters in the front row can attack using any type of weapon. Characters in the rear only do half damage when attacking with anything except bows or magic. However, they only receive half damage from enemy attacks. To assign any character to the role that's best suited for his or her abilities. Okay, so that, uh, that uh, is that. And uh, let's see. So yeah, this is the first game in the series that has the front row, back row mechanic. Uh, here is our menu. We can see that Furion and Guy are in the front row. Maria is in the back row. Now, I kind of like the sprites, but I don't know how I feel about these portraits. They feel a little... I don't know. I mean, they're okay. They they just... There's something about them. They feel a little mushy. Um, and, I mean, they're fine. I'm, I'm sure they'll grow on me. Um... Yeah, so if we look at the stat screen, we see here at the top we have his name, Virion, HP, MP. They're right, that means he's right-handed. And uh, let's see, I'm going to bring the pointer in. That just makes this a little easier. Uh, you see, he's pretty much uh, across the board uh, equally adept or, or non-adept, whatever you want to call it, for strength, spirit, intellect. Stamina, Agility, Magic is a, is a 5. Attack power is 11 right now. Accuracy, 1x. This means the number of hits he'll get in per round. And this is his chance to hit. His defense value, his evasion. 1 evasion chance per attack. 24% chance to succeed. Magic defense. This, I, th I think in the original, this was actually a hidden stat. I can't remember. Uh, similar, a one chance to evade and 12% chance to succeed. Um, strength does what you think it does. Spirit governs white magic, intellect, black magic. Stamina uh, affects HP growth, I believe. Agility and also strength growth. Agility affects uh, your turn in battle. It also affects your evasion. Magic does what you think it does. Um, and everything here does what you think it does over here are skill levels on the right side we have in this side that he is at level one at unarmed knives swords uh canes cudgels staves stabs whatever you want to call this axes pole arms bows and shields okay if we look at uh maria well let me let me back up for Furion, he's probably going to be mostly my tank because see he's Basically, across the board, uh, good at, at all of these martial things. Uh, well, strength, stamina, agility. Okay, that's the big thing. So he'll be good to be a tank. We look at Maria and, and the situation changes. She has low strength, decent spirit, higher than average intellect at, for level one. Well, there is no level one, but for the start, right? Um, stamina, not so great. Agility, pretty good. Um, yeah, evasion, accuracy. Okay, so what I'm going to do with her, I, I think because she has this high intellect, I mean, she's going to be a natural black mage, and this is what I would generally do with her anyway. So it's it's smart, I think, because you have a little bit of an edge here with intellect, to so go ahead and make her your black mage. That means she's basically going to live in the back row for the most part. Um, and she's not going to have a whole lot of uh, 
equipment. Okay, but I'll explain more about that uh, later. Let's look at Guy. Situation with Guy, I mean, he's very strong. Um, he has very good stamina. And he has, uh, let's see, his spirit and intellect are also, uh, you know, they're tens. So, you know, Guy, a Guy would make a good uh, um, tank as well. I usually make him the healer. Because if you look at the agility, you see Ferion has a 10 for agility. A guy has a 5. Uh, Ferion's evasion is much higher than Guy's. So, you know, I mean, you can do it either way. I Both of them are kind of going to be take split duty. You can make any character into anything you want. You can make them all do everything if you want to. Um, I think in this version of the game, they have taken away the chance for you actually to lose stats in battle. I could be wrong. <laughs> we'll find out. But basically, I think I want to make Firion, uh the tank or the sort of the fighter class. Maria, the black mage. And Guy, he can tank and do white magic. And it makes sense to have someone who can tank hits be the healer. That makes a lot of sense. So, I think that's what I'm going to do for now. But one of the cool things about this game is you can change your mind and that's okay. All right. Okay, so that's an introduction. Let me get the pointer rack out of the way. That's an introduction to Final Fantasy II. I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, actually, let's quick save. Yeah. Quick save inside. I'm going to leave it right here, folks. I really appreciate you watching this very first episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy II, the Pixel Remaster. Um, leave a like before you go. Drop a comment down below. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. really appreciate you having you here. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.